Ladies and gentlemen, how are you? Welcome to Adult Education Ingredient. My name is Rosalia Wong. Guess what I'm going to bring you today? Today, the topic is called the Leadership Strategies and Techniques, Part One. <laughs> Okay, let's get started. So for awesome suggestions and advices, book me through the link from the description section below and I will give you awesome insights into what you need to know for your profession and your organization. So let's get back to the topic. So effective leadership strategies should focus on, for example, decision making, the um, priority setting, staffing, marketing, external relations, discrepancy analysis, coordinated program, and also perhaps staff, staffing, okay? So in today's episode, uh, part one episode, I'm going to focus just uh, the uh, decision making and the priority setting and the um, resources and marketing. So uh, for the rest of the uh, strategies, I'm going to focus it on next part, which is part two, leadership strategies and techniques part two. So today's part one, uh, let's get deep, deep into the topic now. Now, first is decision making. So the major administrative decision require the um, adequate decision making procedures and expertise to meet the new challenges. So according to Knox in 1982, he suggested that there are three aspects of decision making, which is um, include the belief, the human and the organization. So the three uh, part of the leadership strategies in uh, decision making is the, uh, uh, the belief, of course. The belief is about the values, the goals and the expectations of the people who associate with the leadership, uh, uh, with the decision process. And uh, the human, okay, the human is the interpersonal um, relations that affect the cooperation that is essential for implementing of the decision making. And organizational, so organizational is the bureaucratic and the political dynamics that influence the um, decision making process and also reflect on the bargaining and the compromise. So for example, uh, the decision making in the higher education setting. So once upon a time, we go back to the story. Okay, for once upon a time, a higher education uh, division that initiate a liberal studies uh, of external degree program for adult, uh, adult students. So the idea that attracts the attention of the assistant director of the division and also attract the attention of the assistant dean of the liberal arts. So they, they, they decided that they need to conduct a need assessment, uh, which is to estimate the uh, size, the characteristic and the interest of the clientele. And then next, the faculty uh, will committee will review the background of the document and they met with the consultant who are with the expertise in the program. And next, the faculty committee will um, plan the re recommends by the committee with the principal administrator's approval, and then they will research the market, and then they, the board member will um, prepare the uh, proposal. And then finally, the program uh, is approved. Is it? This is the process of the decision making in a higher education setting. This is just an example for you. And uh, for the other profession, they might have the uh, same um, strategies but different steps. Okay, It's just for an example how the decision making is going about. Now you can subscribe to my channel by hitting the button and so that you don't miss anything because I bring you new ingredients, new insights and new topics every Monday and Thursday. So let's get back to the topic again. So for new administrators, decision making tends to be a personal process, uh, mainly influenced by the uh, personalities, the experiences, and also the perceptions of the local circumstances. 
So efficient and experienced managers will take the consideration, for example, the public opinions, uh, the more explicit and uh, also focus on the achieving the agreement on the important objectives. So more experienced managers or uh, the um, administrators also concentrate on encouraging people to contribute the achievement uh, of the available aims and also the uh, more experienced managers they enrich the process with their familiarity with information about decision making concepts and procedures. Now next strategy is priority setting. So the priority setting actually I have a video about priority setting which I made a while ago about leadership strategies on priority setting. You can watch the video from the link above. So here I'm just briefly talk about what do you mean by um, priority setting on leadership. Okay, so the strategies of priority setting may appear more political than rational because of the nature of the uh, recognizing uh, competing expectations and values and emphasize on the uh, consensus building, which uh, uh, with that that implies in the form of the uh, bargaining and compromise. So people who include in the priority settings are the policy makers, the um, resource uh, persons and the participants themselves. Here is a quote by Knox 1982 about priority setting. So he said, new challenges can affect priority, um, the agency priorities which reflect competing goals and uh, multiple inferences. So effective leadership strategies accommodate the competing uh, expectations of policy maker, the uh, agency staff, the resource person and the participants themselves. It's a, uh, it's a very uh, useful quote. Okay, you can, I suggest you can listen all over again and then try to understand it. <laughs> okay, as I say, you can watch the uh, leadership of the priority setting more briefly on my other videos. Uh, leadership on the uh, priority setting from the link that I just mentioned before. Now we got, we come to the next section of the strategies is uh, resources. So what do you mean by resources? So re resources actually is related to the financial decisions and require the attention to accounting concepts. So if now financial ideas uh, should put into attention, they are usually related to the purpose, the circumstance and the program development and value judgments. So here resource um, strategies including for example resource acquisition and allocation and also include the cost of accounting strategies. First of all, I'm focused on the resource acquisition and allocation. So resource acquisition and allocation is about financial and education. And resource acquisition and allocation also is about the extent of cost recovery. Like for example, how much of the income to be recovered from participation fees. Uh, just for you, um, for, info, for your information, this one is just for an example. And only for focus on education. For other profession, they might have uh, the, the same strategies but different steps. Okay, so this one is just about for your information only. So next, uh, uh, resource acquisition and allocation. Of course, is a resource acquisition which include the financial and non-financial resources. So next one is about financial information, like flows of funds uh, through a continuing education agency. Finally, the resource acquisition and allocation also include the technical and the value components. Here means the technical procedures, the scientific the management, whether it is consistent, whether it is predictable, whether it is uh, objective, and so on. All right? Now, next uh, part of the resources is about cost accounting strategies. Again, I want to emphasize this one is only for the education. For other professions, you might have different steps as well. So for education here, they have the accounting concepts like pricing, evaluation, and planning. And they are concerned about the public school, concerned about the proprietor school, concerned about the employers, concerned about the uh, uh, community organizations, and perhaps maybe concerned about professional associations. They all are need to have the cost accounting strategies. Okay, this is just a basic one. 
Now, next one, we come to marketing. Oh, before that, um, for very important, if you like some contents, remember to uh, put your thumbs up and remember to put your thumbs up and share it with your friend. And also another um, very important thing is I want to uh, promote my uh, books, uh, which you can find the link in the description section. And it's very important. Reading is very important because reading can give you knowledge, can give you insights, and give you more idea about your, of course, your profession and uh, your uh, organizations. If no reading, you have experience. It's good enough, but we need to have both area reading and experience. So. By clicking the link, you can buy the book and read, and uh, it is good for you. And you can know more more about your profession and your organization through this way as well. And even though if you have you have experience, you know it's no harm to gain more knowledge. And also, the, you remember the phrase called the uh, knowledge is power. Exactly what it means. Okay, you click the link and you buy the book, and also you gain knowledge, and I earn a little bit of commission as well. That's it. Now we come to the marketing. First of all, we need to ask the ask question. So what are the marketing concepts? So here we have three or four, I think probably four of the marketing concepts. So first of all, I'm going to focus on encouraging contributions. What, what does it mean? So for example, encourage the staff to development activities and to support human resource development activities and technical technically technical and also like encourage to contribute money and time this is called the one of the uh, uh, marketing concepts okay now the next marketing concept is the value of responsiveness what do you mean by that so to be responsible for the needs of the participants uh, you need to conduct needs or assessment or evaluation to be able to present a convincing summary of participant preferences that the faculty can then consider. Well, again, I I want to emphasize that this is only for the talk about uh, the education, higher education. Other profession will be the same too, maybe different contexts or different steps. All right, same strategy. Now we come to the third concept of the marketing, which is a marketing audit. And here it consists of three activities. For the education, it has the marketing environment and the agency. And it has the agency's major purposes, programs and organization. And it has the major marketing activities and decision of the agency. Okay, now next, number four probably, uh, the marketing concept is about encouraging the participants. Uh, encouraging participation. Here you can invite some past participants who has knowledge, who are satisfied with the process and ask them to comment and talk about their and testimony about their uh, experiences and um, uh, their process and all that and which can help to increase the, um, the, the, the business as well. The next one, what are the promoting techniques? Again, here is about higher education. So, the promotional techniques about this one in the higher education could be publicity, could be personal contact, and direct mail. For other profession, of course, I say they have different uh, steps or context, but same strategy as well. Okay, that's all for my topic today. And uh, for awesome suggestion and uh, advices, of course, you put me through the link from the description section below. So I will give you all some insights into what you need to know for your profession and organization. And also today, what do we learn? So in conclusion, we learned today uh, the elements of effective uh, leadership strategies are here in part one is decision making, the uh, resource, uh, the priority setting and the resource and the marketing. Also today that we learned that the major administrative decisions require adequate decision making procedures and expertise to meet the new challenges. Also, we learned that today the strategies of priority setting may appear more political than rational because of its nature of recognizing the competing the, of the uh, of expectations and values and emphasize uh, consensus building uh, with all the implies in the form of uh, bargaining and compromise. Today, we also learned that the resources are related to the financial decisions and require attention to accounting concept. 
Also today we learned that for marketing, there are concepts and also we know that today for marketing, uh, we have promoting techniques the same as other professionals as well. This is a private education. Thank you anyway for today for your tuning in and also one thing, um, you can subscribe to my channel by hitting the button so you will not miss anything for I bring you um, uh, new ingredients, new insights and new topics every Monday and Thursday. So thank you very much for tuning in everybody and until next time, we will continue. thank you very much and until next time, and see you again, bye.